about circumcision, part two. This is a comprehensive overview of exactly what is lost physiologically. When a baby boy's natural and intact penis is circumcised, this is what is lost forever. Number one, the Frenner band of soft ridges, the single most pleasure-producing zone on the male body. Loss of this densely innervated and reactive belt of tissue reduces the sensitivity of the remaining penis to about that of ordinary skin. Number two, approximately half of the temperature reactive smooth muscle sheath called the dartos fascia. Number three, specialized epithelial Langerhand cells, a component of the immune system. Number four, an estimated 240 feet of microscopic nerves, including branches of the dorsal nerve. Number five, between 10,000 to 20,000 specialized erotogenic nerve endings of several types, which can discern slight motion, subtle changes in temperature, and fine gradations in texture. This loss includes thousands of coil fine touch receptors called the Meissner's corpuscles, the most important sensory components in the foreskin. Number six, estrogen receptors, the purpose and value of which are not yet fully understood. Number seven, more than 50% of the mobile penile skin, the multi-purpose covering of the glands that shields all of the specialized penile skin from abrasion, drying, and callousing by keratin cell layer and protects it from dirt and other contaminants. The debilitating sexual consequences of keratinizing the glands have never been studied. Number eight, the immunological defense system of the soft mucosa, which may produce antibacterial and antiviral proteins such as lysozyme, also found in mother's milk and plasma cells, which secrete immunoglobulin antibodies. Number nine, lymphatic vessels the loss of which interrupts the lymph flow within a part of the body's immune system. Number 10, the frenula, the very sensitive V-shaped web-like tethering structure on the underside of the glands, usually amputated along with the foreskin or severed, which destroys its functionality. Number 11, the apocrine glands of the inner foreskin which produce pheromones, makes these powerful, silent, invisible behavioral signals potential sexual partners. They contribute significantly to sexuality. Their loss is unstudied. Number 12, ectopic sebaceous glands, which lubricate and moisturize. Number 13, the essential gliding mechanism. If unfolded and spread out flat, the average adult foreskin measures about 15 square inches, the size of a postcard. This abundance of specialized self-lubricating mobile skin gives the natural penis its unique hallmark ability to smoothly glide in and out within itself, permitting natural, non-abrasive masturbation and intercourse without drying out the vagina or requiring artificial lubricants. Number 14, the pink to red to dark purple natural coloration of the glands, normally an internal organ like the tongue. Number 15, a significant amount of the penis circumference because its double layered wrapping of loose foreskin is now missing, making the circumcised penis effectively thinner than a full size intact penis. Number 16, as much as one inch of the erect penis length due to amputation when the connective tissue is torn apart during circumcision. The shared membrane tightly fuses the foreskin and the glands together while the penis develops. Ripping it apart wounds the glands, leaving it raw and subject to infection, scarring, and shrinkage. Number 17, several feet of blood vessels, including the frenular artery and branches of the dorsal artery. The loss of this dense vascularity interrupts normal blood flow to the shaft and glands of the penis, obviously damaging its natural function and possibly stunning its complete and healthy development. Number 18, every year boys lose their penises altogether from box circumcisions and infections when accidents happen. They are then sexually reassigned by transgender surgery and must live their lives as females. Number 19, every year hundreds of boys lose their lives from the complications of medically unnecessary circumcisions. The cause of these deaths is a fact the billion dollar per year circumcision industry willfully obscures and conceals. 
number 20. Although not yet proved scientifically, there is considerable new evidence that an incomplete penis loses its capacity for the subtle electromagnetic cross-communication that occurs only during contact between two mucous membranes and which contributes to the perception of sexual ecstasy. In other words, medically unjustified foreskin amputation of boys ultimately diminishes the intensity of orgasms for both men and women. The physical consequences are grand. They, however, pale in comparison to the profound, permanent, and irreparable psychological, emotional, and psychic consequences. We will address that in a moment, but first... There exists no professional medical organization anywhere in the world that recommends or endorses routine circumcision. There does, however, exist a great deal of denial surrounding the subject, which has stunted the widespread dissemination of the facts and minimized the number of comprehensive studies. Though it, of course, is difficult, if not impossible, to prove the definitive source of the denial, we can safely surmise certain contributing factors. Number one. There exists a strong school of thought which says that fathers initiate or acquiesce the decision to circumcise so that their sons more closely resemble them. In actuality, it is more likely that A, to not circumcise would be to admit circumcision is wrong, which would declare themselves as damaged goods and denigrate their parents for making such a poor decision. And B, to not circumcise their sons would remind them of what was taken from them. Denial of loss. Persons who have lost body parts must grieve their loss. The first stage of grief is denial of the loss. Fitzgerald and Park state that anything that seriously impairs sensory or cognitive function is bound to have profound psychological effects, not only on the person who is affected, but also on family, friends, workmates, and caregivers. The thought of permanent loss of sensory function is so painful that persons deny their loss in order to avoid facing the painful feelings. Denial of loss causes a flight from reality. Park et al. state that persons in denial may minimize their loss. Circumcision causes the loss of a body part in all of its functions, including a drastic loss of erogenous sensory function. So denial of loss is not uncommon in circumcised males. Circumcised males may experience the full range of stress and emotional dysfunction resulting from loss. This frequently results in circumcised fathers adamantly insisting that a son be circumcised. Fathers are frequently unable to vocalize their feelings. They will say that I want my son to look like me, even though the child may be different in eye color, hair color, and other aspects. In fact, what the father really may be feeling is, I don't want a son with an intact penis to remind me of what I have lost. Number two, a similar dynamic has been established by studies that show that circumcised doctors are far more likely to endorse circumcision than intact doctors, in the same way that victims become perpetrators to resolve their victimization at a subconscious level, circumcised doctors circumcise. Effects of denial on medical doctors. Goldman states that some circumcised male medical doctors misuse the medical literature to support, rationalize, and justify their own loss and to defend the practice of circumcision. Denniston reports that doctors who have been cut themselves may be unable to stop cutting others. Le Bourdais reports that the likelihood of a baby being circumcised is determined by the circumcision status of the father, the sex, age, and circumcision status of the physician, amongst other factors. Goldman reports that doctors who are older, male, and circumcised are more likely to condone circumcision. Members of the medical societies may have emotional issues that may preclude the objective formulation of policy concerning non-therapeutic male circumcision. Number three, you may have heard the phrase, follow the money. Circumcision is a billion-dollar-year industry. Therein lies an undeniable conflict of interest that undoubtedly contributes to the perpetuation of this barbaric act. Please join us for the continuation of Part 2 in the truth about circumcision. Thank you.